Welcome back to another Vlogmas video, family. It is your girl T, aka the Nappy Headed Jojoba. Not Nappy, not Jojoba. Nappy Headed Jojoba. You have to say the whole thing, it's like a tribe called Quest. We kicked off 12 days of Vlogmas earlier this week with me dragging five bougie brands that played themselves with some whack ass launches. And today I figured it would only be fair for me to take my own lumps because there have been way more than five times that I played myself. And at that, way more than five times I played myself buying shit needlessly. Listen, over here at Casa T, we're still working on the very necessary deprogramming to break free of the brainwashing that compels us to basically continue to support our own exploitation by fueling capitalism by consuming, consuming, and consuming. As usual, I digress. Today we are talking about five times that I played myself buying shit basically because of YouTube FOMO. That's it. And this self-drag actually tied for second place over on my Patreon poll when I was asking you guys, hey, these are all my ideas for Vlogmas. What do you want to see most? A few years back, I did a video called something like YouTube made me buy it and it sucked. I'll link it here. But unlike that video, these are not things that sucked. I love or at least like all of these. But I definitely played myself with all of these because A of all, I had no interest or intention to buy any of them in the first place because I did not and still do not need them. But then someone on YouTube, usually Alicia, does a video on it, makes it look really, really good, and then tricks me into wanting something that I, in many cases, had publicly denounced like 10 minutes prior. Case in point, the Natasha Denona bronze palette. When the promotional images for this palette first came out, I'm pretty sure I fell asleep instantaneously. It was that boring to me. Nothing new, nothing interesting, nothing that I didn't feel I already had. Especially considering I already had this, the Huda Beauty Topaz palette. I already had this, already liked this, and it was basically a more travel-friendly version of this. This is 100% Alicia's fault. Alicia just made it look so pretty. Now that I have this, I do enjoy it. I think there's quite a few shortcomings, let me say that. Due to the similarities of so many shades within this palette, I feel like it doesn't even need to be 15 pans. It could easily have been a much more curated niner like this one. Especially taking into account with having these repeats and having 15 shades, I still feel like there are a couple key gaps missing. I feel like this palette is missing a deep neutral brown shade. There really isn't that much in terms of deepening up your outer corner or your lash line, creating that smoke, unless you want to go with this more like purpley situation. And I also feel like like just a good middle of the road neutral brown transition or crease shade is needed here. We do have this one called Magma, but I feel like it runs quite red and I would prefer something that had a different undertone and that was maybe a little bit deeper than that. Not to mention these three shades, Sundown, Ridge, and Beach, I think are fairly repetitive as well as some of the shimmers like Alloy, True Copper, and True Bronze all look very, very similar, especially once you get them on the eyes. Despite the things that I think are missing and the things that I think are a bit redundant in here, I do quite like this palette. I feel like for my skin tone, my complexion, whatever you want to say, and I think for many complexions, it's a good workhorse palette. I am wearing it right now. I am actually glad to have it. I've been using it way more than I expected. I've been loving it way more than I expected, but I still definitely played myself because I absolutely didn't need it. Especially since once again, I already had this little one by Huda, and I feel like the issues that I have with that bigger palette from Natasha Denona are addressed here. I feel like this has the versatility that that palette doesn't really provide despite being bigger. I feel like you just got a nicer range of tones. It feels a little bit more planned, a little bit more thought out, but I do think the quality is better in the Natasha Denona one because the blending has been a breeze, which is not always the case with Natasha Denona cough safari palette cough. Before we move on to number two, I'm gonna squeeze in an honorable mention. And this is completely to blame on Miss Kelsey Brianna J. The mini Leela palette. This palette straight up, trash. The quality, it just ain't there. These colors don't want to blend. It's very difficult to build them up. I'm mainly talking about these two because like who gives a shit about these ones. And to be fair to Kelsey, she said this in her video when she reviewed this palette. She said don't buy it. But this color in particular, which is called Poison Berry, I have not yet even found another color that is quite like this. Let me just show you a quick thingy swatch. It's just a very unique tone of purple. I love purple eyeshadow. I keep this and I still use this because I have not found another purple quite like this color. I am very happy I did not pay full price for this. This color, while pretty, very difficult to build up, very stubborn, very dry. And again, Poison Berry, never buy a palette for one color. Like that was not my intention with this, but I am keeping the palette for one color. Poison Berry, she's difficult. She's not easy to work with. 
She gets very patchy, difficult to blend, the whole nine. But again, it's just such a unique purple. Like, look at this. Even the swatch is trash. I mean, that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about right there. And again, this is KBJ's fault, but it also is not KBJ's fault. She said in her video, she was just like, y'all, my blend game is strong. Unless you want to do a lot of work, don't get this. And I was just looking at how pretty she looked and I was just like, uh-huh add to cart. It wasn't immediate. I did white knuckle it at first and then I got the palette actually quite a while later when it was on sale. So this is a weird hybrid of product regret slash playing myself, but also I will not get rid of this until I find a version of this poison berry color and ideally also a blue dahlia that actually f***ing perform. Number two in five times I played myself was with buying this Sonia G smooth buffer brush from her Sky Face Collection. This purchase I can blame on a couple of people. Michelle Wong, Alicia and Mel Thompson. On the plus side, I freaking love this brush and I use it basically every day that I do my makeup. But again, did I need it? No. I do go over my makeup with a finishing powder. I just buff it all over my face and I had brushes that I liked perfectly fine to do that. But then I bought this anyway because I kept hearing about how great it was from all the people I just named. And I was intrigued because it's a lot smaller than what I usually use to buff and I'm already a Sonya G stan. So I was just like, I'll allow it. So I picked this up during the Beautylish gift card event last month. And again, I use this every day and it's pretty much the brush that I go to to buff every day. Or I should say every time I wear makeup because I don't wear makeup every day. To my surprise, I actually prefer having a smaller brush to buff. I thought that bigger was better because I could get it done faster. But this helps me really buff out between like my under eye setting powder and my finishing powder that I'm just putting all over. It lets me avoid buffing over areas that maybe I don't want to put any powder. Like if I have highlight on, maybe it's a cream highlighter and I don't necessarily want to go over that with finishing powder. So yeah, again, to my surprise, I really enjoy the smaller size of this brush. I also have not really used a flat top brush to buff before. I tend to use a more dome shaped or round like ball style brush. So definitely played myself because the brushes I was using before were fine, but so glad I played myself because I love her. Next up, it's time to blame Alicia again. And this is the Pat McGrath uh, Celestial Divinity Luxe Quad and Floor Fantasia. This is from her Holiday 2020 collection. I picked this up when she was doing her Black Friday sale, which seems to have gone on for the entire month of November. It's still in the box because I haven't even swatched this hoe yet. And I believe that this was the least popular of the Pat McGrath quads from her holiday collection, but the other two just didn't speak to me. And this one did, which is weird because as you can see, these tones, light skinted. Frankly, these colors are giving me springtime, maybe Easter garden party more than they're giving me holiday. But that's why I really love them. To me, there's just something very whimsical about this arrangement of colors and I do look forward to wearing it. Now, usually I don't even play by the rules of like dark colors in fall and winter, lighter colors in spring, like I do what I want. But yeah, I just haven't been gravitating to this palette since it actually arrived. I am glad I was able to get it on sale and I am excited to try it. But obviously these tones were not designed with melanated people in mind. I do definitely think it's going to look really pretty and soft on the eyes, which is one thing I like about it. But again, for that price point, do I really need shadows that I have to spend a lot of time building, which I expect is going to be the case with that quad. The fourth out of the five times I played myself that we'll be discussing today will be eyeshadows again. And this time it is the eyeshadows from Surratt. This is basically Mel Thompson's fault all on her own. I remember Mel was talking about a quad that Surratt made. I don't think they make it anymore because it's been sold out everywhere slash discontinued from what I can tell for over a year. But I remember her saying that she actually liked it more than Tom Ford Coco Mirage, which is saying a lot because that's such a cult classic eyeshadow quad and everybody loves Coco Mirage, including Mel. So for her to say that she liked the Surratt shadows better was quite high praise. And here's what really, really got me. She described the Surratt formula as being like foundation for your eyes. Something about the quality of these shadows, even though they're powder, the way they look once they're on the skin, it looks like cream. I don't know how to describe it. So I played myself and I double played myself because once you guys see the shades I have for these, you're going to, I'm gonna be the laughing stock of YouTube. The most boring, basic palette you've ever seen. This is my custom, you know, six shade palette that I made of Surratt. I have a couple more shades, maybe like three or four others, but this is my life palette. Remember when people used to do life palettes? Well, this would be mine. I don't have it in the Surratt branded palette because the Surratt palettes are quite expensive and I also don't like that 
to use them, you're basically uh, peeling the stickers off the back of each shade and then putting them in the pan to use the sticker adhesive. I just bought some magnets off eBay and then these Makeup Forever empty palettes, this was $2, whereas the Surratt palettes are 20 or 25 bucks, something like that. I don't see the point in spending that money on the palette when I could use that to buy another eyeshadow shade. So yeah, magnets from eBay, little magnetic Makeup Forever palette, use that money more wisely. I started off with maybe three or four shades and then gradually added more. And it's true, these are like foundation for your eyes. They're just so beautiful. I've never seen another eyeshadow that looks quite that sophisticated and grown and sexy on my eyeballs. Charlotte Tilbury's luxury quads come close, but these, they're just better. They've just got that little extra something where they look so beautiful and just so refined. I will list the specific shades here in my life palette for you guys underneath the video, but personal standout fave is this color here, which is called Haute Chocolat. It's just this beautiful, golden, gleaming, glimmering brown. Ugh, it just looks delicious. And as boring as these shades look, I get excited every time I pick up this palette to use it. I just know that my makeup is basically going to blend itself and it's going to make me feel so beautiful. Coming in fifth place, we have Glossier. And I'll tell you what specifically, these are really the fault of YouTube in general, but specifically, I would say probably Sade Watkins, maybe some Sam Ravindal in there, maybe some Julia Adams in there. Again, I am wearing these right now, but this is the Glossier Skin Tint and their Stretch Concealer. Yeah, their Stretch Concealer. I picked these up during their Black Friday sale. I've wanted them for years, never bought them because do you know how much foundation and concealer I already have, girl? But I've just always been so curious about this. Again, because of the videos from Sade and Sam and everyone, I've, I've just always been my, my pickle has been tickled for a long time, okay? So I finally caved. I was already going to be re-upping on some other face from Glossier during that sale. So I was just like, well, while I'm here, and I've really been enjoying these. As I said, I'm wearing them today. I was also wearing them in Monday's video. This stuff is definitely not for everyone. The concealer has decent coverage. I would say it's a medium coverage concealer, but this is about as sheer as it gets when it comes to actual like foundation-like products. But I love it. And I'm realizing that I'm starting to do my makeup like all of the girls I hate. You know, like those videos from Vogue or whoever where it's like in the bathroom with Rihanna and it's just like, well, she doesn't need any makeup. Of course her makeup routine is just like, oh, and then I just tap on some concealer with my finger and I'm done. And then she looks amazing. Like people like that, I hate them. But I have to confess, my makeup style has been evolving more and more to be kind of in that line of just tapping things on with my fingers and then calling it a day. So yeah, lately I've been doing my makeup like all the women I hate, like just very easy breezy. I woke up like this. I'm a model of duty, fresh face type of tease. So these played myself also played Played myself with these. This is their brow flick. I'm wearing this right now in black as well as their lip gloss, which I'm also wearing right now. Again, I got brow products I like, didn't need this. I got lip glosses I like, particularly clear. My goat is the MAC lip glass. Why did I buy this? Because I wanted one that was easier to take with me on the go. When it comes to my finances, that is not a good enough reason to buy another version of a product that I literally already have, but here we are. And as much as I love the lip glass, it's this applicator that makes me not really wanna throw this in my pocket when I'm leaving the house. This is much easier to deal with when I'm out and about, which is rare these days. Mm -mm -mm. Fact of the matter is, I didn't need base products. I didn't need brow products. I didn't need lip gloss, but I love them all. So when I look at these products, all I can do is shake my head at myself and at my bank account, but I'm really glad that I have them all. All of them, except for that mini Lila palette, really bring me a lot of joy. Again, we're still working on deprogramming myself from loving material things, okay? That's it for this 12 days of Vlogmas video, but all y'all here on YouTube will be seeing me again tomorrow because this is going to be a Project Exodus video. I know, it's been a while. I have by no means abandoned Project Exodus. In fact, I talk about it a lot on my Patreon, but the actual tangible resources I do plan to always keep free here on YouTube. That was always the intention when I first started it. And the fact of the matter is I haven't been able to create that much content around it for you guys here on YouTube because I've been working toward my immigration fund. I work freelance, so when I have gigs, I have to work and I need to stack my coins. Last time I did Vlogmas two or so years ago, Fridays were 4C Fridays. But since y'all don't care about my hair content, we ain't doing that this time. Let's call it Freedom Friday, how about that? Because we are seeking our freedom and our peace 
wherever we may find it, which uh, certainly does not seem to be possible here on American soil. Thank you for watching and hanging with me all the way to the end of this video. Once again, tomorrow's video will be publicly available here on YouTube, but if you want to see all 12 days of Vlogmas, hit me up on my Patreon. If you are in the notification squad or above, you will have access to all 12 bits of content from 12 days of Vlogmas. And I say bits of content because it's not just gonna be videos. There might be a Zoom party or two in there. Hmm. And since I'm already cringing from that bit of self-promotion, I'm just going to ride the wave and also let you guys know that my merch is back. If you want some of my Never Trust merch, I got sweatshirts, t-shirts, mugs, and even socks. So there should be a link here on screen as well as one below the video, as well as one in the D box. So with that, I will give you my usual reminders to stay safe, stay dangerous, and never trust anyone with a Morphe code. Bye-bye. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs>